Welcome to the Late Show. Have a seat, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I am your host, Stephen Colbert, and it is a hot. It is a hot time in the old town tonight, and I got to give it up for this audience right here, who stood outside, who stood outside for hours in the scorching heat, and then were drenched in a downpour. We are definitely not getting our deposit back on these people. <laughs> Whole country has been set to flame broil, but in some places, it's extra crispy. For over a week in Oklahoma, temperatures have topped 100 degrees. It is so hot, the state has a wilted panhandle. <laughs> and we can show that, right? That's fine. <laughs> Things can get much hotter, according to climate activist Al Gore, Seen here in a sexy PSA about the dangerous warming in your pants. <laughs> Gore went on the Sunday shows this weekend, warning that our atmosphere could get a lot worse. Thanks, Al. <laughs> Where were you 20 years ago when we could have done something about... I'm sorry, he what? <laughs> he what? Really? Well, maybe if more people had voted for him than the other guy, he would have had a chance to be... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Say hi to Tipper. What? <laughs> Here's what the former almost president said. Behind me, you see a picture from the International Space Station that shows how thin the atmosphere is. And the award for most depressing Zoom background goes to Al Gore. <laughs> Better luck next time, unmade bed with lump of clothes on it. Gore explained the effect of all the carbon we're dumping in the atmosphere. That's why the heat r records are being broken uh, all the time now. Uh, that's why the storms are stronger, why the ice is melting and the sea level is rising, and why the droughts and fires are, are hitting us so hard and so many other consequences. And while I'm depressing you, I just want to let you know that switching to paper straws does absolutely nothing. Well... <laughs> While you idiots wash yogurt residue out of a plastic cup, I'm gonna go punch a sea turtle. <laughs> Thankfully, not all the news is about deadly heat. There's also plenty of plagues, specifically monkeypox. And I'll tell you the latest in my segment. Everybody's got something to hide except me and my monkeypox. Imagine there's no lesions! <laughs> On Saturday, the WHO declared monkeypox a global health emergency. No, no, WHO. No new health emergencies until you finish your COVID, little mister. <laughs> How can you have your pudding? The reason monkeypox has been upped to emergency status is because it's spreading faster than the scientists had expected. As of today, New York City alone has logged over a thousand cases. That is unacceptable. The only disease you should contract in New York is herpes from a subway pole. <laughs> Welcome to our beautiful city. <laughs> Touch nothing. The CDC has provided some information on how monkeypox spreads, mainly through direct contact with an infectious rash and bodily fluids, which is why they say, when at all possible, people with monkeypox should handle their own soiled laundry. That CDC report was written by Dr. Mom, who is sick of this. <laughs> You're 23, Jordan. Go to a laundromat. <laughs> you got a Unlike COVID, <laughs> researchers have found that the monkeypox virus can live on surfaces for up to 15 days. Okay, I spent over a year wiping down my groceries, but I draw a line at scrubbing my monkey. <laughs> it's a sin. <laughs> speaking... <laughs> speaking of diseased on Friday, we got a verdict in the contempt trial of former presidential advisor... <laughs> <laughs> Steve Bannon, seen here spotting a good sleeping place at the dog track. <laughs> Leading up to and through the trial, Bannon has been fiercely defiant. This is going to be the misdemeanor from hell for Merrick Garland, Nancy Pelosi, and Joe Biden. We're going to go on the offense. We're tired of playing defense. We're going to go on the offense on this and stand by. Pray for our enemies, okay? Pray for... Because we're going to medieval on these people. 
We're going to savage our enemies. So pray for them. That's Who needs prayers? Certainly not Stephen K. Bannon. He doesn't need prayers or want them. I believe we have footage, is this true, of the last time someone prayed for Steve Bannon. To the power of Christ compels you. To the power of Christ compels you. To the power of Christ compels you. So... What kinds of savage medieval hell did Bannon unleash on his enemies during this trial? He put on no defense and was found guilty on all charges. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> Evidently, Bannon was hoping to win in the court of public opinion. Unfortunately, his trial was held in the court of court. And now that he's convicted, Bannon faces up to two years in federal prison. And that is amazing news for everyone except for the prison guard who has to perform the strip search. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bannon, sir, please remove your shirt uh, and your other shirt <laughs> and all the remaining shirts. <laughs> we had a question backstage as to whether the audience would remember that he wears a lot of shirts <laughs> at once. <laughs> I wasn't sure if y'all would remember. I think I was right. <laughs> so that's a victory in a way. No laugh. <laughs> Little victories. The jury convicted Bannon after less than three hours of deliberation, including a lunch break. It took them less time to convict him than it did to agree on calamari for the table. <laughs> Reminds me of the classic film, 12 Hangry Men. Bannon's not the only one being affected by the January 6th committee. Their hearings have had a huge negative impact on the reputation of former president Grand Theft Autocrat. <laughs> according, according to a recent New York Times Siena College Kibbles and Bits poll, nearly half of Republican primary voters are seeking someone different for president in 2024. <laughs> wow. And... A significant number are vowing to abandon him if he wins the nomination. So that means the hearings are working. The former president has been betrayed by his closest friend, TV. <laughs> watch out, sir. Sir, watch out. Toilet will betray you next. The things it's seen. <laughs> Seems like... Wow. Wow. <laughs> Seems like Republican viewers are listening uh, on January 6th. Uh, <laughs> go back. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I was so thrown. I was thrown by how emotionally invested you were in his toilet. <laughs> okay. Seems like Republican viewers were listening when January 6th committee member Adam Kinzinger said this. I say this to my fellow Republicans. Watch this with an open mind. And is this the kind of strong leader you really think you deserve? No. The strong leader Republicans think they deserve is Rambo Jesus riding a tiger with double Ds. <laughs> One... It's a good-looking tiger. One Republican who seems to have turned on the former president is media mogul and billionaire blobfish Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> on Friday, after the committee demonstrated that the former president actively wanted the insurrection to happen, Murdoch's New York Post published an op-ed calling the ex-pres unworthy to be chief executive again. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well said. Well said, New York Post, but where's the pun? The headline should have been, Uncle Rupee Poo Poo's Coo. <laughs> Is there a Murdoctor in the house? <laughs> this weekend, at the Right Wing Turning Point USA Summit, we heard from Missouri Senator and star of the new film, Fascist Gump, <laughs> Josh Hawley. Hawley's best known for raising his fist in solidarity with the Capitol rioters, then being one of the senators who objected to Biden's victory in Pennsylvania after they stormed the Capitol. And he told the crowd this weekend he is not sorry. 
I objected on January 6th last year to the state of Pennsylvania. And I just want to say to all of those liberals out there in the liberal media, just in case you haven't gotten the message yet, I do not regret it. And I am not backing down. I'm not going to apologize. I'm not going to cower. I'm not going to run from you. Yeah. He is never going to run from his enemies. In fact, here he is on January 6th, bravely moonwalking into danger. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Congressman Jamie Raskin. But when we come back, another installment of our award-winning tech segment, Cyborgasm.